Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to Organic Chemistry Paper 3. In Unit 3, we are studying about heterocyclic compounds. In Lecture 2, we are going to study about nomenclature of heterocyclic compounds. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha MHRD New Delhi. The topics that will be covered in this session include the Hans Widman nomenclature. So, we will be studying elaborately like how heterocyclic compounds are named. We will look at the type of the heteroatom, the ring size and the nature of ring. So, these are all the three important uh, parameters based on which heterocycles are named that we will study. We will also study about the prefix and the general stem role whether it is a saturated system, whether it is an unsaturated system, whether it has a nitrogen, oxygen or sulfur heteroatom, how we are going to name that compound we will be studying in this particular session. Let us look at the different nomenclature. So, here are various uh, journal articles uh, names are given. So, those who are interested can actually go through many of the papers. Although these are very old papers 1887 and 1888, so, Hans and Widman are the two great scientists who had introduced the nomenclature for heterocyclic compounds. So, that is the reason the nomenclature for heterocyclic compound bears their name. So, we have the Hans Widman nomenclature for heterocyclic compounds and later on IUPAC and other people had actually modified some of the rules. And in 1958, they have introduced the IUPAC nomenclature where they have given specific rules for heterocyclic systems. And uh, later on in 1960, also they have modified with uh, how to name the compounds when they have oxygen, nitrogen, halogen, sulfur, selenium and or tellurium compounds. And uh, later on in 1971, they also have included more sections for the nomenclature for heterocyclic compounds. So, according to the Hans Widman nomenclature rule, we have three major rule we have to remember. One is called the type of the heteroatom. So, what is the type of the heteroatom that is being included in the ring? Then we talk about the ring size that is the number. And uh, the third one is the nature of the ring, whether it is a saturated one or unsaturated one. So, these are all the three major uh, rules we have to remember while naming a compound, especially the heterocyclic compound according to Hans Widman rule. So, we have something called the prefix and the suffix. Uh, we also have heteroatoms, we have ring size. So, these are all the important things we have to just keep in mind and when, once we go through the nomenclature, we can study more about that. So, what is the prefix and suffix? So, basically the prefix is basically the heteroatom, whatever is the heteroatom that is given as the prefix. Say for example, for many of the heterocyclic compounds, when oxygen is present, we give the prefix oxa. If sulfur is present, we give the prefix thia. And when nitrogen is present, we give the prefix aza. So, these are all the three different prefixes which are actually added to the cyclic uh, nomenclature. So, the first one is the prefix we have to know because we are going to talk about only oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. So, oxygen is oxa, sulfur is sia and nitrogen is aza. And the stem is the second one that is size and the unsaturation. So, these are all the three rules whatever we saw that is one is what is the heteroatom. So, this is number one and the size and unsaturation is number two and three. So, this is the stem based on which we are actually going to name the compound. So, uh, how do we name the compound? Basically, the position of the heteroatom is denoted by the ring atom number. So, what position the heteroatom is present? In most case, if we have only one heteroatom, then we start with uh, the numbering from that particular heteroatom only. So, it will get the least number that is 1 and then the rest of the compound is named based on the heteroatom whatever is present. And when the 
at last the size and the degree of unsaturation of the ring is determined by the suffix at the end. So, these are all the simple basic rules and once we apply this we will understand how to actually name a heterocyclic compound. So, we have different ring sizes. So, this is one of the things we have uh, seen uh, because we have three major types. One is the heteroatom. What is the type of the heteroatom? Then what is the ring size? Then we also have whether we have the uh, saturated or unsaturated system. So, these are all the three major uh, rules we have to remember and uh, the first one we are going with the ring size. So, the stem actually is given based on the ring size. So, the suffix is actually the one which we actually uh, add to the name. So, when we have a three membered ring it is called IR. So, this IR actually came from the Latin word tri but uh, it is little bit uh, shifted that means uh, instead of R I we are actually using it as a IR and when it is a four membered ring tetra ET is the word and that ET is actually used as the suffix and for the five and the six membered ring this is quite uh, uncommon and uh, there is no Latin equivalent for this one generally OL and IN are the names which are uh, added as a suffix in the case of uh, heterocyclic uh, nomenclature and for the other cases we can directly follow the Latin name. So, hepta that means EP is given for the seven membered ring, octa OC is given for the eight membered ring, nona ON is given for the nine membered ring, deca EC is given for the ten membered ring. So, this is how from 7, 8, 9, 10 they simply followed the Latin nomenclature and even for 4 the Latin nomenclature is followed but 3, 5 and 6 are the 3 ex exceptions to this particular rule. And depending on whether nitrogen is present we actually have a different name. If nitrogen is absent then the name is little bit different. Say for example, when nitrogen is present we have two cases because we also talked about uh, the third rule where we talk about the saturation and unsaturation. So, when the nitrogen is present we have two types one is a unsaturated system we also have a saturated system. So, depending on whether the ring is a saturated one or unsaturated one the name actually changes. So, the suffix whatever we add is IR. So, if there is a unsaturation the name will be IRINE and if there is a saturation instead of IRINE it is IRIDINE. So, this ID is added extra when it is a saturated one. The same way if it is unsaturated ring with the four uh, membered ring its uh, name will have ETE. Whereas, when there is a saturated thing instead of ETE we else actually have additional things etidine. So, when we name the compounds we will actually see the difference how we have to actually name, but these are all the various uh, important things we have to remember while we are naming the heterocycle. And when we go to the systems where nitrogen is not there that means we have only oxygen or sulfur in that case the I is not present instead of I we have E in the case of three membered ring and for four membered ring and five membered ring if you look at very carefully whether the nitrogen is present or not present they have the same stems and the only difference comes in the case of saturated systems if nitrogen is present if it is a four membered ring it will have the ending like etidine and if it is nitrogen is not present then it will have etane. So, that is the only difference for the four membered ring and for the five membered ring olidine is the ending for the saturated ring with the nitrogen. Olane is the name for saturated system without nitrogen. And when we talk about A here is means the prefix prehydro will be added to all the 
saturated systems. So, when the nitrogen is present, we actually add the prefix perhydro to the name. So, these are all the ways by which the heterocycles are named. Of course, this rule looks highly complicated and it is very difficult to follow. But, but when we use the examples, we will exactly know how these rules are actually applied. So, let us take the example of uh, the simple system that means oxygen system we are looking at here. So, here there is no nitrogen. So, that rule is going to be little bit uh, different. So, let us start with the basic rule. So, this is a double bond. So, this means uh, this is a saturated one. Uh, this is unsaturated one. So, all the examples given here are due to unsaturation because we have at least one double bond in the system. So, whenever there is one double bond this belongs to unsaturation. So, when there is unsaturation that means the name are going to be little bit different compared to the saturated one. So, we have seen the suffix will have to add IR, ET and OL for 3, 4 and 5 membered ring. So, this is a 3 membered ring. So, we have to add IR and uh, the unsaturation whenever it is present the whole name is going to be IRENE. -E. So, that is what IRENE -E is the final name and OXO is the ring system because whenever oxygen is present we give the prefix OXO to that uh, particular uh, ring naming. So, OXO for oxygen for sulfur we have thia. So, that means when we talk about the three membered ring IRENE -E is the stem ending and uh, whether it is oxygen or sulfur depending on that we add the uh, prefix oxa or thia. And when we combine these two things the last letter A is actually lost. So, when we give the name final name oxa irene is written as oxyrene and thia irene is written as thyrene. So, the last letter A is lost while we are writing this final name. Similarly, when we talk about the four membered ring, the four membered suffix is ET and uh, unsaturation is ETE. So, oxa ETE is the one we wrote the same way thia ETE is the name we wrote. But we have one saturated carbon here that means there is a two hydrogens are present here. So, this is the third rule which we are going to add that means uh, along with the saturation and unsaturation we also have to mention the hydrogen. So, this is the important rule whenever there is a saturation the lowest number is given that hydrogen as NH. So, if we name this particular uh, ring the naming will or the numbering will start from here this is number lowest number is given to the heteroatom 1 and of course in normal uh, IUPAC nomenclature we give the next priority or the lowest numbering to the double bond but in the case of uh, heterocyclic compounds we are not going to name that this as the number 2 but the lowest number is given to the saturated carbon which is having two hydrogen atoms. So, this has to have the lowest number and not the double bond. So, when we number this here we start number 1, this is number 2, this is number 3 and this is number 4. So, in this particular case the two position is having the hydrogen extra. So, that is why we say 2 H O E E O X E T E. Oxa means this is oxygen heterocycle. The last letter A is lost. So, OX is added as a prefix. ETE is the suffix. So, the name for this compound is 2 H oxate. And when it is a sulfur, the same thing we are going to follow instead of oxa, we have to use replace that with the thia and the numbering again. Here is the lowest number 1, this is number 2, and this is number 3, and this is number 4. So, when it is a 4 membered ring, the suffix ending is ETE and the sulfur is present thia and in uh, 2 carbon it is a saturated carbon. So, we have to add the 2H here. So, this is 2H thiate 
and when we talk about the five membered ring so the five membered rings uh, suffix is ol and unsaturation is ole so the ending is going to be ole we have an oxygen so this is oxa so oxa plus ol and the last letter a is last so oxol so this compound is nothing but oxol according to i uh, hansman and uh, wildman uh, nomenclature hans wildman nomenclature and when we talk about the next one which is the five membered ring so here again the number there is no uh, saturated uh, carbon uh, like the case of four membered ring so that's the reason this can be given like a normal suffix and the unsaturation because we have two double bonds so thia ol and uh, thiol that is the name which is given for this particular compound so this is the general stem rule and in this particular case we talked about all the unsaturated compound that means at least one double bond is present in these particular systems so even if we have a double bond when there is a saturated carbon with two hydrogen atoms they are actually given the number like nh or n comma n plus 1 dihydro tetrahedro depending on the size of the ring we can actually add this kind of prefixes so when we give the numbering the hydrogen atom which is the saturated carbon always gets the lowest number so this is one thing you have to remember the lowest number for the hydrogen atom or the saturated carbon now we are going to the saturated system so in this particular saturated system we do not have any double bonds we are not having any double bonds so here the saturation means the ending only changes so in the previous case we have irin here it is irene so oxa is the oxygen heterocycle and irene is the name so when we combine these two the last letter a is lost so oxirene so this three membered heterocycle is called oxirene and if it is a three membered sulfur heterocycle that is called thirene and if it is a four membered heterocycle with oxygen then the ending is a etane oxa etane so oxetane and if it is thia it is thia etane thietane and if it is a five membered ring the saturation is olein so oxa plus olein oxolein and if it is a sulfur it is thia plus olein thiolein so this is how we actually have to give the heterocyclic compounds nomenclature the major difference comes in the case of nitrogen heterocycle so here the rules are little bit different so we have two examples one is a saturated one another one is a, one is a unsaturated system another one is a saturated system so this is the unsaturated one this is a saturated one so in the unsaturated one we have at least one double bond in the system so we have to follow the same thing what we have used earlier also the only thing is this is the suffix uh, with which the name will end irin and uh, aza is the nitrogen analog so whenever we have a nitrogen uh, heterocycle we use the prefix aza aza plus irene as we know the last letter a will be last so azirene and if it is a uh, saturated one the name ending name is going to be iridine aza plus iridine is aciridine so this is a three membered heterocycle with the nitrogen atom so this is a saturated heterocycle and the name is aciridine so this is how we can actually give the iupac nomenclature for the heterocyclic ring and when we talk about the four membered ring here again we have a saturated carbon so that means the number has to be the lowest number has to be given here so that is why we have the 2h number given here and in the case of uh, completely saturated one we don't have this uh, requirement so that is the reason only the ending changes so as a plus etidine acetidine is a four membered ring and in the case of uh, four membered ring with one double bond it is 2h dihydroacid 
So that's what we have written earlier also whenever there is a heteroatom we may have to write that as a dihedro system and uh, if it is a 5 membered ring which is a unsaturated one we have azole azole plus ole azole and uh, if it is a saturated one asa plus olidine so the ending for the saturated system is olidine so azolidine is the name for this compound these are IAPAC uh, given nomenclatures but, but of course for all these uh, simple compounds we also have common names and we will also be looking at what are the common names for all these compounds. So when we talk about the numbering, so the numbering of a heterocycle follow a little bit a different rule compared to other cases. So in this particular case oxygen gets the highest priority priority means it should get the lowest number and followed by sulfur and then finally by nitrogen so there are two things you have to remember when we are naming a heterocycle one is the basic name of the system and another one is the numbering so these are two different things we have to remember and when we talk about name the nitrogen gets the priority because whichever is the nitrogen ring is given as the base ring and the name is given based on nitrogen only. So this is the highest priority for the name. And when we talk about number, the number nitrogen does not get the highest priority but nitrogen gets the least priority. Oxygen gets the highest priority followed by sulphur then only nitrogen is given the numbering. So these are all the two things you have to remember when we talk about heterocyclic nomenclature. So if there is only one heteroatom we have no problem. So we can give the lowest number to the heteroatom. When there are two heteroatoms we actually start from one of the heteroatom then go to the next heteroatom in the shortest route. So for this compound we generally do not give the number as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is not a 1, 5 system actually this is a 1, 3 system because by this way only we get the lowest number for the second heteroatom. And when there are only one heteroatom as I mentioned we do not have to have any preference we can always start with the lowest number with the heteroatom. But when there are more than one heteroatoms as shown here on the right hand side we have nitrogen 1, nitrogen 2. So these two are adjacent to each other. So we can uh, give the numbering like uh, 1 for this uh, saturated nitrogen followed by the unsaturated nitrogen. So in most of the cases the hydrogen atom actually gets the precedence. So that means when there are two nitrogens, one with the hydrogen, one without the hydrogen, then which will get the lowest number is always the nitrogen with the hydrogen gets the lowest number and this compound is not numbered as uh, this as 1 and this as 2 is not the way of numbering. The nitrogen with hydrogen gets the lowest number followed by the next nitrogen. So that is how the numbering is given for this system. Similarly in this system also this is not numbered as 1. Only this nitrogen with the hydrogen is numbered as 1 and this nitrogen gets the number 3. So this is how the numbering is actually given when there are more than one heterocycle, uh, one heteroatom is present in the system. And when there is between oxygen and nitrogen as we see oxygen gets the lowest number. So this will start from number oxygen on number 1, nitrogen gets the number 2 and the same is applicable here also. So this compound is called isoxazole and this is called oxazole. These are common names and we will look at uh, these things a little later. And when there is a sulphur and nitrogen again sulphur gets the priority in getting the lowest number followed by nitrogen. So when we number the heterocycles uh, heteroatoms we have to follow oxygen gets the highest priority in other words the lowest number is given to oxygen followed by sulphur then only nitrogen gets the number. So this rule we have actually seen the numbering of uh, saturation. So uh, we have to apply the lowest number for this saturation point. So wherever there is a saturated carbon that saturated carbon is given the lowest number 
unlike the normal uh, IUPAC nomenclature. In the case of IUPAC nomenclature, if we have alkane and alkene, we generally give the preference to the alkene carbon. So, the alkene carbon gets the lowest number followed by the alkane. Whereas, in the case of heterocyclic nomenclature, it is the saturated carbon with the hydrogen atom gets the lowest number. So, that is the reason this is called the 2H pyrrole and uh, if we have to give the lowest number to the double bond, then we can actually start from the other way around. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and this carbon will become the fifth one. So, we are not giving the 5 number to this particular carbon, but we are giving number 2 that is the lowest uh, number is given to this saturated carbon. Similarly, when we take this uh, thiazine unit, this carbon is the saturated one having the lowest number and again priority as you know sulfur gets the highest priority getting the lowest number followed by nitrogen. So, that is the reason this is 1, 2, 3 and in the case of acipine this carbon is having the lowest number. Similarly, for this one how to number we can start from here 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is the fifth one. If you move from the other direction, let us stay from here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. In both the cases, this is the lowest number. So, this compound is given as 5H12-diacepine because nitrogen is present in 1 and 2 position. So, that is what uh, 1 and 2 diacepine is the 7 member rings name. So, as we mentioned, uh, there are lots of common names which are used in heterocycles. So, we know the name oxyrene is for this 3 membered uh, oxygen heterocycle, but this is generally called as ethylene oxide and uh, aciridine is uh, another name given and uh, ethylenamine ethylenamine is the name for this particular cyclic system. And uh, of course, uh, furon is the common name which uh, many people are aware of and oxol is the IUPAC nomenclature. Similarly, oxalane is uh, not generally used whereas tetrahydrofuran is the name which is commonly used in uh, synthetic chemistry and uh, heterocyclic chemistry also. Similarly, thiophene, pyrrole, pyrrolidine are the names which are generally used even for uh, many of the nomenclatures, although IUPAC uh, nomenclature gives a little bit a different name, but these IUPAC nomenclatures are not commonly used for these kind of simple systems. For example, pyridine is uh, same whether it is IUPAC nomenclature or the no common name. Pipridine is the one which uh, we generally use imidazole, thiazole, dioxane or morpholine, pyrimidine these are all the common names which are used for various heterocycles. Of course, the IUPAC nomenclature are given below, but these are not regularly used. Let us look at some of the important rules for naming when there are more than one heterocyclic ring. Say for example, if there are two rings are present and uh, if both of the rings are having the same heteroatom but their sizes are different. So, how do we name that compound? So, the answer is we have to use the larger one. So, we have a 6 membered ring here, we have a 5 membered ring here. So, if we have to name this compound, the base name is given based on the 6 membered ring only because this is the larger ring. So, we have to follow the name that means the ending is going to be on pipiridine uh, structure. That means, this compound is named as a pipiridine derivative and not the 5 membered ring derivative. So, this is one rule we have to remember and uh, if we have uh, two rings which are having the same size, but the heteroatoms are different. Uh, say for example, we have the nitrogen and the oxygen. So, the rule is basically whenever we have uh, two different uh, systems, if they have the same size, then depending on the heteroatom, we are going to number. So, the priority is nitrogen is getting the highest priority for this naming. So, the name follows nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur rule. So, that means 
whichever is the nitrogen uh, heterocycle that is named as the base ring that means this compound is named as a piperidine derivative and not the oxygen derivative similarly when we have oxygen and sulfur this is a five membered ring where oxygen has the priority so this is named as a furon derivative and not as the thiophene derivative so let us uh, recap the two rules when the ring sizes are different the bigger ring gets the uh, base unit when the rings are of same size but the hetero atoms are different then the rule is nitrogen gets the highest priority that means the base name is given using nitrogen heterocycle <coughs> followed by oxygen then only sulfur is given and if there are uh, having the same size but the number of hetero atoms are different this is very easy to answer because when there are more than one hetero atom then obviously that ring is going to get the base name so when there are nitrogen and oxygen in one ring and uh, nitrogen only in the other ring the name is given based on the two hetero atoms present in one ring that means it is going to be named as a morpholine derivative and uh, similarly when we have the nitrogen and oxygen so this is basically the isoxazole derivative so this compound is going to be named as a isoxazole derivative and if the two rings are of the same size but the number of heteroatoms that means the two heteroatoms are also same but if they are different then how are we going to give the greatest variety is the one by which we are going to number it so that means here we have nitrogen and sulfur in this case we have nitrogen and oxygen so the nitrogen and oxygen gets the highest priority so this is isoxazole derivative so we are going to name this as a isoxazole derivative so here oxygen gets the priority compared to sulfur both other units are similarly same compound that means nitrogen is the same so we can ignore that and we have to go for the next hetero atom which is having the highest priority based on that the base ring that is the stem rule is applied and if we have uh, two hetero atoms or maybe the rings are of uh, same size and the hetero atoms are also same then how do we actually name them then here we get the lowest priority to the numbering so here it is one two substitution here it is 1 2 3 4 substitution so between 1 2 and 1 4 1 2 gets the lowest uh, number so that is the reason the base unit given is uh, the pyridazine unit for these kind of compounds so these are all the ways by which uh, we can actually name various heterocycles Let us recap in the summary what we have studied so far. We have studied about Hans Widman nomenclature. So here we studied about the type of the heteroatom that means based on nitrogen, oxygen or sulfur heterocycle how a heterocyclic ring is named we have seen. When it is an oxygen we use oxa, when it is a sulfur we use thia and when it is nitrogen we use asa as the prefix for naming. We also studied about the ring size, the nature of the ring the numbering for each heteroatom all those things we have seen we have also studied about if there are more than one ring how to name which ring is going to be considered as a base ring and depending on the saturation how we are going to name the heterocycles all those things we have studied we also studied about the prefix and the general stem rule what are the different ways by which the heterocyclic compounds are named that we have seen starting from three member to nine membered we have compared how uh, nitrogen base heterocycle and uh, heterocycle without nitrogen are named we have seen whether there is a saturation whether there is unsaturation depending on how the name changes that also we have studied with that we conclude this session on nomenclature thank you